Hello everyone. Welcome to a Holy Rust Revival. We're gonna take a break from some nice, shiny, pretty Farmall Cub tractors that we've been working on uh, to get back to the old Mustang project. And uh, we're gonna take a little bit different twist today. If you've been following the last couple of videos, I've been working in the floor pan on this old 67 Mustang. You can see right here that we've replaced the torque box and the tow board and all that kind of stuff underneath and working our way back on the floor pan. But I recently had my 50th birthday and I have found that shop nights when you work all night long just don't work anymore. Um, I just pay for it for the next couple of days and rolling around on the floor and up in that floor pan trying to reach way up in there to weld. It takes a feller a couple of days now to get over that. So we're just going to change pace a little bit today and we're going to replace a relatively easy part even though it's pretty involved to do so. But I won't be laying on the floor to do it. We're gonna replace the uh, inner fender apron that also holds the battery tray. And the problem on a lot of these old cars is of course the battery acid leaks out and over time creates rust around that general area. And pretty much any old car that you get is gonna have an issue around the battery tray. I mean, that's just a given. So let me get you in here and let's evaluate the situation and we'll get to replacing. Thanks y'all for watching, hope you enjoy. Okay, you guys are currently sitting in the engine bay of a 1967 Mustang. Did you know that when you woke up this morning that you would be sitting in an engine bay of a 1967 Mustang? I bet you didn't. <laughs> anyway, what you're looking at right here is basically where the battery sits uh, in the engine bay of this old Mustang. And you may say, Rob, that doesn't look too bad. Um, and it doesn't. You have to be careful when you buy an old car because somebody could have been very, very skilled in the fiberglass works. You know what I'm saying? So you might want to hold your ears here just for a second, but I need to prove to you that this is not as good as what it looks like or visibly looks like on camera now. I'm fixing to do some beating, so um, cover your ears if you need to. Here we go. Okay, uh, it doesn't look quite as good anymore as it used to, does it? Uh, let me see if I can do this without cutting my finger all kinds of ways. All right, so that looked like metal, didn't it? That's what it really looks like. So we have a little issue right there. Would you not agree? Yep. Yeah, that's nasty. That's my first time seeing it, too. Hmm. Okay. We got our work cut out for us tonight, but we're going to make it look really well. I guess it should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway. You're going to have to remove the front fender in order to do this job. The front fender is comprised of a couple of bolts right up here. There's two bolts underneath right here. And then there's also a bolt that lines the fender up, um, with the door jam up here. So it takes a little time, but it's not impossible or hard to get that fender off. So that comes first before you get started on that. So one of the, so one of the first things I'm gonna do is remove this, uh, oh, I don't know the exact term for it, is the casing that protects the top of the spring. Um, I don't know, I don't know what the word party is, but anyway, it's this protective cap. I've taken all the other five bolts out. You'll just get to witness the six bolts because I know that you don't want to sit here and watch me take out all five of those bolts. You just want to see the, oh, I thought I saw a wasp in there, wasp nest. Hey look, that is a great place for a wasp nest. If you live in the deep south, you understand what I'm saying, the wasp can be everywhere. So, let's see if this reveals any more surprises back here. Look like it might be a black widow. That's something else we have to worry about. 
the deep south. Ooh, yes. That is nice. Nice and crusty. Uh, there have been varmints living in there. I see some dirt dauber nest, and that is no doubt a black widow nest right here. Uh, there has been a black widow in there at some point in time. But I tell you what, on this part, you'll notice that it is rusted through a little bit. But on the last 67 Mustang that I did, uh, the company sent two of these and didn't send me the right one for the left side. So guess what? I have this part in stock. You know, you know it's a sickness when you start having Mustang parts in stock of your own. I'll tell you another little trick that I like to do is I like to go ahead and put the bolts and the nuts back in the holes so that when I stack it in the shelf over there, I can know where my original hardware is. Otherwise, it will get on my bench over there and it will be disseminated into the rest of the bolts that I have in my box over there and I will never find those again. So anyway, that's just a little tip or trick that I thought you might enjoy. It's just a personal preference of mine, but I like to go ahead and get a lot of the large sheet metal out of the way because when I'm working with my hammer drill later, it's just easier to tug on smaller pieces than the whole piece as a whole. So I'm gonna use my trusty plasma cutter. Go ahead and start cutting out some of this uh, to get down to the smaller pieces. Plasma cutter is the thing. And if you don't have a plasma cutter working on an old car, you definitely need that. Now I did struggle a little bit over here because there was some, uh, um, there was some, uh, oh, underspray, underspray uh, that the it was having a hard time getting a good grain through. That's a lot of tetanus fixing to come off right there. By the way, I have had my tetanus shot. If you're hosting Holy Rust Revival, you gotta have a tetanus shot. All right, that looks a little bit better already, doesn't it? We we'll spent some time gnawing out a couple of the, these other pieces. All right, folks, let me show you where we stand. And by the way, I'm gonna have to talk louder. You may hear the tin on the, or the rain on the tin roof ahead. Um, I'm so thankful that we're getting rain. It was starting to get pretty dry here in Mississippi. Anyway, I took my plasma cutter and basically cut around the inside edge about an inch inside all the way around. Now the next thing will be my air chisel that I'll use to get kind of in between these joints and start knocking out some of the old material. You want to make sure that you keep and take care of this material, but the material that's in the apron that we're replacing, you had not got to be careful with that at all. So if you're going to tear anything up, make sure you tear up what you've got to replace. And by the way, there's the pan right there. I meant to show you that at the very beginning. That's the repair panel that we're going to use to put in here and replace all of this. So, so far, great job. We're only in this thing about, I don't know, 45 minutes so far. So a lot of difference can made in a little bit, be made in a little bit of time. All right, air chisel time. Speaking of the older I get earlier, the more I wish I could go back in time and do what I was supposed to do. For example, wearing hearing protection. And working with an air chisel, this is necessary. I'm sure my ears have been damaged for many, many years of just shrugging my shoulders and saying, I, I don't need that. But I wished I could rewind time, especially when you're working on tractors and chainsaws and heavy equipment. Make sure 
to use here in protection. Take care of those ears. You only get one pair. See now why I like to cut out the big piece? You can actually work with that just a little bit better. You can use that as leverage to kind of roll that thing on up. For the second time, I'm just going to show you this a little bit. I'll come back and show you when I have everything cleaned up. But I just wanted you to get the idea of what was going on. All right, so I got out all of the extra stuff that belonged to the old panel that was in there. And the air chisel, you know, it's kind of rough. But what I'm going to do now is take the grinder and clean up all of this stuff that it left. There will be, you know, pieces in here that I'm gonna have to grind off. But I'll get all this smoothed up so we can start fitting our new panel. Now, I uncovered a little something. So when I pulled this part of the, the apron off, I found some rust down in here. And it's part of the radiator support. I really was not wanting to get into the <laughs> radiator support. However, look at that right there. That, that's pretty nasty right there. Somebody attempted to pull the car at some point and just wrapped a rope or a chain around this whole thing and then just pulled the car and really boogered that radiator support up. So I think what's going to happen tonight is I'm going to clean all of this up, but specifically right through here. Um, and I may not weld any of this in so I'm going to sleep on this overnight and see what direction I need to go. If it weren't for that, I would fix this right here so that I wouldn't have to replace all of that in the front. But that plus that might mean that we've got to, we got to do something. Anyway, let me do a little grinding and clean it up and I'll bring you back and show you where I am at that point. All right, so here's the first test fit of our apron install for the battery. It's not perfect yet. All I just have it just sitting in there just so I can, I can see. I think I'm gonna have to do a little trimming right over here. 
And on this side, there's a little bow up here that we're gonna have to work out. And certainly I don't have it snugged up down here just yet, but uh, anyway, it's not bad. It's not far from where we need to be. Uh, looks a lot better than it did before. And that's the beauty of these old Mustangs. These old parts are, are just plentiful. They're everywhere. You can pretty much buy this whole car part by part, piece by piece, and put together a brand new car. All right, let me come back. Uh, first of all, Feather's gonna go eat supper. And uh, he's gotta get his tank filled before he can seal the deal with this project right here. Okay, let me show you a little of the prep work before we go to put, put this thing in and weld it. Um, I didn't show video of me drilling all of these holes because I knew <laughs> Y'all didn't want to sit here and watch all of that. I actually used that drill press right there, as well as this drill with some of the hard to reach places like up in here. But anyway, these are gonna be the spot weld holes uh, that I'm gonna spot weld uh, with a wire welder to start my puddle in the middle and, and penetrate to the under metal and then into the top metal here. Now you may say, Rob, that you didn't cut those <laughs> very straight. Uh, and look, the um, spot welds from the factory were not even straight. They were all done by hand, by someone. So there's no consistency. They didn't have a robot back then doing all this. So it just depended on wherever the person was and where they put that spot weld actually boop, to spot those things. So don't get on me about these holes not being perfect because they weren't even perfect from the factory. So over here, I'm about done prepping most of what I need over here. I wanted to put a little primer on so the bare metal wouldn't be so much behind uh, the panel. Um, and I have also decided that I'm not going to weld this up right here because I'm going to replace this whole um, panel up here. If I'm putting this much effort into this car to make it a very nice car, I'm not going to fool with that right there, and I'm not going to leave that kind of rust in it right there. So that's not going to get welded tonight, but the rest of this will be put in. All right, let me get her in place, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I got it in place. I don't have that up tight down there yet. I'm going to work my way down and across. It all fits well. It just needs to be pulled in and welded as we go along. However, I just wanted you to see how these spot welds are going to be. Uh, found a little hole. It's amazing how many of these surprises come up when you start <laughs> working on it, but I'll fix that. That's not a big deal. All right, so we'll start welding away and uh, filling these holes in. I'll start the puddle in the middle and then work my way out to the other panel. That'll be a very solid weld on those two panels. Much, probably much more solid than it was from the factory. All right, let's get busy. Well, help if you put the ground in a better place.
that's on there. It uh, certainly is not going to be something that'll come off. And like I've said before, I feel sorry for whoever tries to get that loose again in the future. So a little bending and cleaning and you know a little sanding we're going to do is going to make that look good. All right, I got to get in here and spend about 30 minutes welding up all these holes. I know you don't want to watch all that, but uh, I'll show you what happens when I'm done. Never fails. Always forget something every time I get in a car. Left my other glove out there. It also helps to have a little light with this auto darkening helmet. It just makes it so much better. At least I'm able to sit down on this project. Okay, I've got about 30 minutes of this. Be back and see you in a minute. Well, y'all, it's almost 11 o'clock. My wife gets on me all the time because I tell her my project will take, oh, about an hour, hour and a half, and usually it ends up taking four hours because something goes wrong. <laughs> and there wasn't anything terrible in this process. I just covered the bolt holes up at the bottom for the bottom of the battery tray and didn't even think about it, welded them all in. So it took me a while to get those holes um, um, fabricated back out. But, hey, how does it look? Uh, is it a professional job? No. Am I professional? No. I'm just a farm boy that enjoys cars. Okay, that, that's all I am. By trade, I'm a high school principal, specifically for technical education where I train students or, or provide training for students to do this sort of thing. So what I want to leave you with tonight is maybe the conversation that we need to start having with our teenagers in school needs to be different. For many years we've said you've got to go to college, you've got to go to trade school, you've got to go to the military. How about we ask this question? How about we start asking them, what is your passion? What makes you get up every morning and uh, have joy and, and, and just want to be a part of whatever it is that, that you enjoy. Maybe that's the question we need to ask and we need to work with the end in mind and work our way back. And yes, that might be college, it might be trade school, it might be military, but let's explore the passions first because I really believe that our country is su suffering uh, in workforce now because so many people have not found their passion. And um, 
So anyway, that's that's my soapbox spill for the night. And it is 11 o'clock on a Saturday night. And I've got church in the morning. I've got to teach Sunday school. And uh, I got to not go to sleep in church. You know, my pastor kind of sort of looks over my way sometimes. And uh, he can tell when I've had a shop night on Saturday night. So Brother Wade... That this is the reason why. <laughs> All right, y'all. Hey, let me bring you in and show you the inside. Okay, here's a shot of the inside. Would you say that that will hold a battery better than the other box did? <laughs> you have to agree that it would. Um, are my spot welds perfect? No. Is it going to hold? Yes. Now, remember, I didn't weld any of this because I'm going to end up replacing this uh, radiator core support. I just, I can't leave that happen. I can't let that happen. As nice as that is right there, I can't leave that nasty looking something right there. So, I have never replaced a radiator core support. Uh, that was actually the only good thing in Braden's car when we did it. So, <laughs> this is going to be a learning experience for me as well. Certainly, we're going to take that fender off, separate it from that skirt. Hopefully, we won't mess this skirt up and not have to do it again. But anyway, that's, that's the project for the day. I think we can say success on that one. Now, before it's all said and done, I will take some seam sealer and, uh, and seal it up really good. That's, that's a bad spot right there because a lot of water stands right there in that bracket. And I can understand why that would want to rust out. So I think that needs to be seam sealed really good with some very good undercoating on it uh, when I'm done. All right, folks. Good night. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the of the battery tray and all that. And uh, I don't know. The young folks always say like and subscribe. I don't know what they mean by all that stuff. I'm just having fun making videos. But if you like this, do what they say. All right. God bless y'all. Have a good evening. Thanks for watching.